Howdy all, it's Miss Kosh. I wanted to work through the double angle identities. Um, and I like to start with the fact that the double angle identities come from the sum and difference identities. So HL and PreCal, you're required to know the sum and difference identities. SL, you're not, which is why I wanted you to watch the beginning of the video I made on sum and difference, um, just for this purpose. So all of it's good and interesting and helpful and all that, but um, you're curriculum actually only has sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta, not even tangent. So, um, but pre-cal and HL, you have to know all three. Okay, so here are the sum and difference identities. Just as a quick little reminder, I put them at the top of the right here. And so what we know is that sine of 2 theta would be equal to sine of theta plus theta. Okay, because theta plus theta equals 2 theta. So what I can do is I can use the sine sum and difference identity, the sum identity, and expand this out. And so this becomes, this one I remember as sine, cosine, um, same S-I-G-N, cosine, sine. Well, they all had the same variable because it was just theta plus theta. So notice these two terms, they're, they're written in a different order, but they're the same thing. So this is just equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So I went ahead and put all the nice beautiful identities down at the bottom so they'd already be typed up, but, but there we go. Next, cosine of 2 theta would be equal to cosine of theta plus theta. And so now we can say, well, this one I remember, cosine, cosine, sine, sine with the opposite, S-I-G-N. So cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. And you'll also start to see why it's so important we include these variables. Um, I should have mentioned that in the in the sum and difference day um, video because um, it doesn't matter here because they're all the same vari variable, but there's a big difference between just cosine, like if I have cosine A times cosine B and I just write this, you're like, mm, what is even happening? Okay, don't do that. That's a bad idea. Okay, um, so notice cosine times cosine is equal to, oh, to cosine squared. And sine times sine is equal to sine squared. And so this is this part right here. But we can use our Pythagorean identity, or I like to call it the Big Daddy, to, to rewrite this um, in, in a few different forms. So one option, let's change the color, is to say that cosine is equal to 1 minus sine. And so now, rewriting that, I have 1 minus, well, I have 2 negative sine squared, so minus 2 sine squared theta, which is, I did this one first for no good reason. And then I could also, let's change the color again, I can come back to this, this original thing, and it's cosine squared theta minus, well, sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine squared. And so this becomes a, right here, this becomes a positive when I distribute the negative through. So I end up with 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, and that came right here. So the trick with this one is knowing when to use which one. And really... You can try one method, and, and I've definitely seen some tricky problems, and I was struggling. I had a typo on, on a worksheet I was trying to make an answer key for, and I kept, I tried this, I tried this, I tried this, and then I went back to where I pulled the problem and was like, oh, I had a typo. Anyway, um, the trick is figuring out when to use which one. And so the more practice you do, the more you'll start to know which of those three you want. Okay, so now let's look at um, tangent. And so this would be equal to tangent of theta plus theta, which is tangent of theta plus tangent of theta all over 1 minus tangent, that's a, a tangent of theta times tangent of theta. Okay, so I see two tangent of thetas in the numerator, and then I see minus tangent squared theta, and that is how we get to that formula. So, um, hope that was helpful. Now, um, I have three examples that I'd like to do with you. The first one, prove that that sine of 2 theta over 2 cosine theta is equal to sine of theta. Um, HL, pay attention to this. I have seen this sort of thing show up in our proof by induction. So, when we do a, a, um, a trig induction problem, I've seen this a number of times. So, um, yeah, hang, hang on to this. So the first thing I'm going to do when I prove this is I'm going to say, well, sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta divided by 2 cosine theta. Okay, well, the 2's cancel, the cosines cancel, and I now have that sine of theta is equal to sine of theta. I probably won't give you a proof that that's, that is that easy. Um, if I do, you have to say thank you, Ms. Kosh, because that was kind of nice. 
All right, so the next one. Um, on this one, I'm going to draw our little... They're telling me now I'm in quadrant four, and this is going to behave in a similar way to what we did in the sum and difference video. Um, so remember, three pi over two is here, and two pi is here, and so we're in, in quadrant four. And they said cosine is adjacent... Well, I shouldn't have made that negative. My bad. I'll have to go back and fix that. You know what? I wrote the worksheet. I'm going to change it. Cosine is now positive. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, I'll have to... Hopefully the typo is not on your paper now that I've already fixed it by the time you see it. But Okay, so the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And now this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. I did that on purpose. This becomes a negative 4 because it's going in the negative direction. And so what I know is that sine of theta would be a negative 4 fifths. Cosine of theta is equal to a 3 fifths. And tangent of theta, if I need that for any reason, is equal to a negative 4 thirds. Okay, so then I can find sine of 2 theta would be equal to 2 sine of theta cosine theta, which is 2 times, well, what did we say sine was? Negative 4 fifths. What did we say cosine was? We said 3 fifths. And so I have 3 times 4 is 12 times 2 is 24, negative 24 over 25, and we're done. Well, with that part. Um, one of the biggest things that I see kids do is they'll say, oh, this is 2 sine of negative 4 fifths um, times cosine of 3 fifths, and then they get confused and they don't know what to do. This is all kinds of wrong. Don't do that, okay? Um, you have already taken sine of theta is negative 4 fifths, so don't write sine of. It's kind of like saying, I'll have kids say, oh, the square root of 16 is equal to the square root of 4. No, it's not, okay? Sorry, that was, I don't know what's up with that tone of voice. But you've already done the operation. You took the square root, you're 4, you're done, okay? Um, so, let's get rid of all of that. Anyway, don't make that mistake. Every year I see it, oh, I lost this, over 25. Um, and now, they wanted us to do cosine of 2 theta. We have choices, Okay, to be honest with you, probably what I would do is I would use the one that had cosine in it, and so I would use 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, just in case I, if I messed up somewhere over here, and then I use one of those other formulas, then I, I, I don't have a chance to catch my mistake. Um, if I use what they had already given me, which was 3 fifths, then hopefully that will catch my mistake. Um, this is 2 times 9 twenty fifths. Minus, I see a denominator of 25. I'm just going to write that as 25 over 25. I see 18 minus 25, which is negative 7 over 25. Okay. And then let's look at um, tangent of 2 theta. Now, yes, I'm aware that there's a shortcut, but I'm going to practice using the formula. To be honest with you, SL, you don't have to know tangent of 2 theta, but um, pre-cal and HL, you do. So we can use this formula. It's 1 minus tangent squared. And then we said tangent, this is 2 times negative 4 thirds. 1 minus negative 4 thirds squared. This becomes a negative 8 over 3 divided by... Um, I see a 9 in the denominator, 9 over 9 minus, what is that, 16 over 9? Okay. Um, I'm tired of fractions. Let's multiply everybody by 9 over 9. And so this becomes negative 24 over the denominators cancel, 9 minus 16. 9 minus 16 is negative 7, and so I get 24 over 7. And here's what you might have noticed, is that tangent of 2 theta would be equal to sine of 2 theta divided by cosine of 2 theta. Oh, I lost the 2. My bad. Okay, which we already know those values. So this is negative 24 over 25 divided by negative 7 over 25. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I can multiply by 25 over 25. And I get a negative judgment of negative is now a positive, which is what I got that other way. I, I knew that. I did this on purpose where I um, wanted to, to practice plugging into the formula. Okie dokie. Let's look at the... Oh, I got an email. Okay. Um, let's look at this last one. Um, actually, let me stop. I'll talk to you later.